Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I wanted to talk to you today about an article that was re recently published in the British uh, journal called Lancet, which is a very high-impact medical journal. And the paper was on a drug called etrolizumab, also known as Rumab Beta-7. And so this molecule is an antibody directed against a, a substance called beta-7 integrin. Integrins are molecules that interact with adhesion molecules and they allow white cells that are in the blood vessels, think of the blood vessel as a tube, the white cells are in the tube and they need to leave the tube, the blood vessel, to go into the soft tissue and cause inflammation. So these integrins are on the white cells and they interact with these adhesion molecules which are found lining the blood vessel cells and so that interaction is sort of like a zip code for the white blood cell to leave the blood vessel, go into the soft tissue and cause inflammation. So this beta-7 integrin is actually found on two different integrin molecules. One is called alpha-4 beta-7 integrin, and the other one is called alpha-E beta-7 integrin. And these interact with two different adhesion molecules. One is called MADCAM, and the other one is called E-cadherin. And MADCAM is found only in the gut, and E-cadherin probably regulates the ability of the white cells to leave the uh, epithelial lining or the mucosal lining. So in any case, this drug was studied in a group of patients with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. There were about 120 patients in the trial. It was randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind study, and there were three treatment arms. And so in the first arm, patients only received four infusions of placebo. In the second arm, patients received 300 milligrams of etrolizumab at weeks 0, 4, and 8, and they also received a placebo infusion at week two. And in the third arm, patients received a loading dose of 420 milligrams of etrolizumab at week zero, and then at weeks two, four, and eight, they received 300 milligrams. And the primary endpoint of the study was remission of ulcerative colitis at week 10. So again, they got these infusions at weeks zero, two, four, and eight. Primary endpoint was remission at week 10, Remission is defined in most of these studies as a Mayo score of two or less. And the Mayo score is a combination of score based on number of bowel movements per day, how much rectal bleeding you're having, what your colitis looks like at the time of endoscopy. Is it in total remission or is it mild, moderate, or severe? And then the physician's global assessment of whether you're mild, moderate, or severe. And those add up to a total of uh, 12 and anything two or less is considered remission. So at the end of the study, at week 10, none of the placebo treated patients were in remission. 21% of the patients on the lower dose of etrolizumab were in remission and 10% of the patients at the higher dose were in remission. And those differences in the two etrolizumab arms were significantly higher than that in the placebo arm. So it, the trial met the primary endpoint. Also, they looked at serious adverse events, and the rate of serious adverse events was 12% in the placebo-treated patients. In one of the etrolizumab arms, it was 12%, and in the higher-dose etrolizumab arm, it was even lower than 12%. So the rate of serious adverse events was no higher in patients receiving drug compared to patients uh, receiving placebo. So this phase two trial was a positive trial and this drug is going on to be studied in phase three trials for ulcerative colitis. So again, an, another drug in this class of lymphocyte trafficking blockers and we're looking forward to its development. Thanks.